Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is Super Loop Multi-Platform Monarchy. Today we're doing something a little bit different. So, I've been playing a lot of Grip. I'm sure you guys have noticed. If you haven't, you obviously haven't been watching the channel. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get started with this discussion right off. I'm talking about what the vehicles look like, how they behave, how they sound, and what I think the interior of the cockpit might actually look like. So, per vehicle class, there's five classes. And I'm going to take about two minutes to discuss the exterior, how the vehicle performs, and then what the interior might look like. Vintex. So, Vintex is styled after race cars of old. They're supposed to look like muscle cars. They go fast, they hit hard, they have a lot of power. <laughs> More power. <laughs> uh, my Tim Allen impression sucks. <laughs> so obviously the outside is designed to look like a muscle car. As you can see from the spinny thing. I don't know what the heck to call that. It's the garage. Um, so, what I think their interior looks like. They're probably using the old leather style. Two seats in the front. A bench seat in the back. They're two bucket seats. And they use the big three prong bespoke wheel. And they have a leather thong thing on the, um, on the steering wheel. And that's how the steering wheel looks. And it's got like a... It's got like the V in the Vintech logo just emblazoned right in the middle. It's one of those tiny horns. You like, yeah, press beep beep. And uh, yeah, it's like the, just the, it looks very, the design is very spartan compared to what it has, what you would consider a modern car to look like. It's very spartan. And I would assume they have like the, uh, the eight ball style gear shift. And they would probably have a lot of leather, probably some bare metal here and there actual window cranks. Some of you might not remember window cranks. You actually had to crank your window up using a gear system and a hand crank on the door. Anyway, I'm showing my age just like Ventex, so let's move along to the next vehicle class, shall we? Pariah. Now, Pariah is known as Ferocious Scrap Metal, but they are also built out of scrap metal. These things are the kinds of cars you want to put a net under while they're driving along Otherwise, parts might fall off, and they probably do fall off during the races. Judging by the way any of these things' engines sound, they sound like the engine was built out of aluminum and steel mixed together. It sounds like the engine blocks ready to blow apart at any moment's no at a moment's notice. Uh, what the um, the exteriors lack in put togetherness. I think the cockpits make even worse. They're probably very Mad Maxian, with even more bare metal than the Vintex would have. And when I say bare metal, I don't mean like sheets of metal. I mean like maybe a few pieces of corrugated steel here and there. Like on the underside of the bandit, it has a piece of corrugated steel for its spoiler. But I'm pretty sure these things are even worse. And they're probably put together with barbed wire. Because I don't think they would have had a lot of bolts available on Jahartra. So these things are probably cobbled together really badly. I mean, you want to think about what they look like? Think Mad Maxian. Mad Maxian. I have a sketch here I'm not going to show you because I'm not very proud of it. It looks like trash. But like the top of the steering wheel is probably built out of, car out of like chains and uh, barbed wire. And then there's probably like chains linking the steering wheel together to the actual steering column. Yeah, that I can see them using like a rudder almost because they're super cheap and they would just have like two rudders hanging down. So it's like this low V shape so they steer by swinging the rudder back and forth. You should see the motions I'm making right now. It's incredible. <laughs> but no, I'm pretty sure that Pariah, any any piece of the interior looks like it's about to fall apart. And it's gear shift probably has a skull on top of the gear shift because fuck logic, you want a skull for your gear shift. Put your fingers in those eye sockets and shift into gear. Terra. Now, Terra vehicles are built to resemble Terran and Terra. Terran tanks, different types of armed forces vehicles. So, you know, light scout vehicle, um, a Humvee, and then a tank. The Dreadnought's supposed to resemble a tank. So I would assume that they're a lot, a lot like tanks, they're just, they're armor on wheels. Every vehicle in the Terra line is going to be just a chunk of armor stacked on top of wheels. There's no open spaces. There's barely any spaces for weapons or lights. All weapons, the metal is molded around the uh, the muzzles of the guns and the rocket launchers. <laughs> Cut the belch. Um, okay, so they're going to have a lot of armor. 
I mean, you guys have seen what they look like. They have the urban camouflage and everything when you first start. My Dominator does not look like it belongs in a city. It looks like it belongs in a fucking field. But let's get into the interior. So, similar to Pariah, there's a lot of exposed metal, but it's not going to be the twisted and barely held together metal. It's going to be solid bolted panels, much like the outside. Very, very spartan, even more spartan than Vintex. There is no leather. It is a molded metal chair with a few holes for ventilation so your butt doesn't get hot. And then the steering wheel is like this blocky yoke thing. It doesn't have a horn. It doesn't have any emblazements. It just has two triggers. I'm going to assume for the weapons on each side because it's left and right buttons. So each, each trigger activates one of your pickups. And then, of course, you have a steering wheel, and then, of course, you know, you have the accelerators below. Does it use a get? Does it use an actual gear shift? No, it's an automatic. They don't got time for that shit. Put that fucker in gear and go. They don't have a man manual gear shift. This thing is full automatic, because how else are you supposed to fight? Saigon. Now, as we've seen, the Saigons have a lot of angles. They are the definition of angular. And they make an angular look kind of round. <laughs> Pun anglers around um so they're very very boxy they're very well, i don't think they're gonna be spartan but i think that they, they're gonna have uh they might have some edges i mean they're very they're edgy they have edges so let's go on to what the interior probably looks like like most of these vehicles it probably looks similar to the outside I would assume Saigon is very sleek. It's going to have uh, curved but still angular panels on the inside. The cockpit's probably going to be right in the middle. And the steering wheel is going to be an octagon with the top part cut off. So it kind of still resembles a yoke, but it's going to have four spokes instead of three or two. And um, I don't know if it's actually going to have any grip or if it's just going to be just this big block of probably crystal. <laughs> I can honestly see them building their steering wheels out of crystal because they would be that type of manufacturer. I'm not very big on Saigon cars as you've noticed. I don't really like them that much. I like Ventex. I like the sound of Pariah but their handling just feels a little loose. I, I think they do perform on Chihardro though so I might start driving them more so I feel Chihardro a little bit more. Um, but yeah, no. I don't like Saigon that much. On. Naivas. Now, Naivas is a, considered a weaponized supercar as shown by their logo. But I'm going to be pretty certain that Naivas cars, they're always going to look like what you would consider a modern day car, except they're styled more for the rollers. So their shape is a little bit exaggerated. But beyond that, I think they're pretty freaking good. Um, not a whole hell of a lot to say, just that they're going to have the same exterior and interior as a modern day automobile. Um, as you guys have noticed, I really, really like the Nivos line of cars. Although, the last one, I'm not sure if I like the shape that much or not. I think it's supposed to be styled after like a really, really exotic Lamborghini. I don't know folks, I'm just not big on the design of the speed version, but I'm going to use it whenever I have to have an actual speed course come through. And okay, so let's talk about the Nivos interior before I run out of time. Nivos is probably going to look like very much like a modern car, modern sports car. Lots of leather, even more than the Vintex family has. No bare metal. It's going to be all electric windows, all power everything, automatic transmission, with the ability to go manual, depending on the driver's preference, of course, because it's a supercar. You really want to go manual so you can get those, get the roar out of the engine. And even the engine sounds a bit more optimized. It's, the, the engine seems to spool up a little bit, and that's that's a good thing. You want an engine that does that if you're going to be using a sports car. And I would assume the steering wheel looks very much like a modern steering wheel. It's a perfect circle. It's got grips up on the top parts. It's got four spokes, but they're kind of like that curved shape that most modern cars have. And like they link down at the bottom of the wheel and there's just a big opening so you have your gauge cluster. I didn't even talk about gauge clusters on these vehicles. 
I'm gonna assume Nivos will probably use similar to modern day vehicles, maybe a digital layout for its gauge cluster. Okay, Saigon. I didn't talk about Saigon enough, so here's a little bit for the Saigon gauge cluster. <laughs> Again, the Saigon gauge cluster is going to be very angular, and it's probably going to be like just boxes for the cluster. I don't think Saigon would actually use. They would be like use super digital, <laughs> like just super blocky digital letters. Nivos would use more of the rounded digital. Terra. They're no-nonsense. They're going to use your standard needle gauges. Modern-day needle gauge. They're not super fancy, but they're not low-tech either. Pariah! Pariah gauges are probably going to be like arrows pointing to a number. They're probably going to be like paper or plastic arrows bolted to a tachometer that kind of gradually tick up. Kind of like something out of the early days of Jack and Daxter or like Crash Bandicoot. Seriously, they are going to look like they're a piece of junk. And of course, Vintex is going to use the old style gauges where it's a thin needle picking up. I think that's it for the end of the video, folks. Thanks for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this brief discussion about Rip's interiors and exterior designs. Uh, it's been a lot of fun putting this video together. It probably looks better than it sounds, honestly. Um, but I hope we were able to get some uh, discussion out. Keep things going down in the comments below. If you have any ideas, any comments, if you think... I might have messed up on what a vehicle might look like on the inside. Let me know. If you have anything to add, let me know. Seriously, this is a discussion video. Let's get things talking down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you never miss a video from me. Don't forget to check out the multi-platform monarchy. Listen in the down below. Don't forget to discuss the video. And above all, folks, have a good night and good luck.